Good morning. And uh, I would like to thank once again uh, IUGS for uh, supporting this remarkable event that we've all experienced. And especially thanks to Hassier for uh, all of the good work in organizing. Today, it's my great honor and privilege to, to present uh, information on the, the Northern Snake Range Metamorphic Core Complex in Nevada, USA. The North Snake Range is arguably the best exposed metamorphic core complex in the world. It is distinguished by a structural detachment zone, formerly referred to as a décollement, that is recognized regionally over tens of kilometers. Deep canyons cut into the core, let's see if I can get this to, there we go. Deep canyons cut into the uh, core of the complex, giving uh, amazing three-dimensional exposures into its architecture. Beneath the detachment zone are well-developed quartz myelinites. And this site was among the core complexes that helped define the nature of microstructures that define the brittle to ductile transition uh, in the crust. There's excellent stratigraphic control in the area that allows estimates of strain and I'll uh, just cut to the chase here and note that uh, the lower plate deformation accounts for thinning of the crust as much as uh, 10%, down to 10% of the original uh, stratigraphic thickness. And rocks above the detachment zone are stretched about the same amount by brittle and normal faults. So let's take a look at this remarkable structure. Uh, first of all, uh, I am uh, reporting on behalf of uh, Drs. Elizabeth Miller from Stanford University and Jeff Lee from Colorado School of Mines, so please forgive me for reading uh, their notes. In these uh, images here, these are photomicrographs of uh, the type of myelinitic fabrics that we see on the uh, micro scale, and uh, here we see uh, so-called uh, white mica fish that are uh, kinematic indicators. We see the intense reduction of grain size that is uh, typical of uh, myelinites. And here we see a, a garnet that, is, uh, that has produced uh, pressure shadows uh, during the deformation. And it's important to note that this metamorphism actually is late Cretaceous in age of 80 to 90 million years old. And this uh, sequence of metamorphism fully predates the extension and deformation in the detachment zone. So where are we in the world? Well, this is a map of uh, Western North America. And let me just point out that the metamorphic core complexes are in black up and down the Cordillera here. Uh, we call these the string of pearls of metamorphic core complexes. And the North Snake Range is here in Site 12 uh, on the Nevada-Utah border. It is geologically located between the thin-skinned severe style fold and thrust belt that we see here uh, to the east, and then to the west is the uh, Sierra Nevada batholith of Cretaceous age. Uh, the core complex itself is built on Creta Cretonal rocks that are Neoproterozoic in age, and the uh, Phanerozoic uh, sedimentary section is some 15 kilometers uh, over uh, the top. Now, what is a core complex? Well, there's three essential components to a core complex. Um, most important is the zone of detachment that we see here, and this is a zone of incredibly high strain, uh, and we'll see evidence of this coming up. On the hanging wall, we typically have low-grade uh, metamorphic rocks or undeformed uh, sedimentary rocks uh, that uh, typically undergo brittle deformation. And you can see a series of normal faults that sole into the detachment zone here. So the upper plate is characterized by brittle extensional faulting. Uh, the lower plate is characterized by, uh, typically by crystalline rocks, sometimes with uh, sin uh, deformation intrusions. And one other thing, you can just see in the corner here, there are often sin sedimentary basins that develop on the hanging wall as well. 
So let's look at the uh, snake range in um, some detail now. I do want to point out that outside of the zone of deformation, here in the confusion range and here in the Butte Mountains, we have a complete stratigraphic sec uh, section. And this is quite important because the detachment zone plunges underneath the confusion range by uh, some 10 kilometers or, or so. So this represents the true stratigraphic thickness of the rocks that we see uh, in the core complex itself. Here we see rocks of the hanging wall that you see in the blue here, and they are extended along these normal faults that you can see here. And please note the extreme thinning of the section that we see here compared to the confusion range. And then rocks of the foot wall uh, are in gray, and the ductile detachment zone is along the black line that we see here. In the map, um, we see these colored contour intervals uh, that you see here, and it turns out that these are argon ages, these represent argon ages with cooling ages uh, on the order of 60 million years in the west and younging to 20 million years in the east. And these cooling ages also follow uh, the direction of higher finite strain from west to east. So um, again, we'll see uh, evidence of this in just a minute, but the, the greatest deformation and thinning is gonna be on the eastern limb of the core complex. Uh, in the next couple slides, we'll take a look at a cross section along this line here. Uh, let's see, okay. So uh, the rocks um, in the area in the hanging wall, uh, the upper uh, plate is dominantly Cambrian to Permian carbonate rocks that originally have a stratigraphic thickness of six to seven uh, kilometers uh, thickness. And the lower plate includes uh, the Prospect Mountain quartzite and these rocks in the lower plate are uh, typically neo-proterozoic to lower Cambrian rocks that include quartzite schists and some carbonate rocks. The base of the lower plate is not uh, exposed. And again, importantly, uh, let's go to the next slide here. Um, importantly, rocks of uh, the lower plate have been thinned by as much as 10% uh, of their original thickness. Looking at uh, cross sections of the, this area, uh, again, whoop, this is very finicky. Here we are looking at the detachment zone that we see here. The hanging wall is characterized by two sets of normal faults, one uh, west dipping, the, that is the older set, and the more prominent uh, east dipping set here. And you can see that these occur as a series of N echelon faults that stretch along that detachment series, uh, and then uh, in the darker color down here, those are the older foot wall rocks. If you look at the cross section down here, this shows the amount of finite strain that we see in uh, this very dominant unit, the Pros Prospect Mountain Quartzite, and here you can see that uh, compared to the stratigraphic thickness, again in the Confusion Mountains, that the thickness of this one unit has been uh, stretched down to about 40% of its original thickness here on the west. And remarkably, as you go to the east, way over here, uh, that extension has uh, thinned the, the unit uh, down to about 10% of its or original thickness. Uh, what else do we need to say here? I think that is most of what we need to say there. Um, here is a view looking to the north um, uh, across the uh, northern snake range. These cliffs here are on the lower plate, and this is the prominent uh, um, Prospect Mountain quartzite again. The top of the detachment zone is right along this edge here, and then these are the upper plate rocks that are 
then faulted in those uh, in echelon uh, nor normal faults. Um, what else do we have here? So, um, you know, the main point here is that you can uh, uh, see this detachment surface in uh, great detail, and you can understand its geometry in three dimensions. This is uh, looking at um, the rock in uh, a little more detail, uh, looking up close. And uh, some of the key myelinetic fabrics are, first of all, a very uh, subhorizontal uh, flaggy foliation. And that foliation almost always has a very strong L-tectonite fabric, a very strong stretching lineation uh, on those surfaces. When you look at these rocks in detail in thin section, again, you can see the kinematic indicators. You can see the... Uh, sigma type uh, deformation structures in the garnet here, intense grain size reduction that is uh, typical of myelinites. And uh, although uh, not nominated as a stone site, uh, this is a quarry site that has been used for, uh, many, uh, for many years for building stones in the western United States. Uh, here we're looking at the far north part of the range and uh, the point of this is that almost all of the rocks that we see here are actually carbonates. And in this case, carbonates uh, in the white cliffs here uh, compose the, uh, the lower cliffs. These are the lower uh, Cambrian carbonates. The detachment zone follows through here. And uh, the point is, not only do we have good myelinites in the quartzites, but also good myelinites uh, in the marbles as well. Um, a number of uh, brilliant scientists have contributed to uh, the understanding of um, uh, metamorphic core complexes. Art Snoke is from University of Wyoming. Brad Hacker from Santa Barbara um, have made uh, significant contributions. I will uh, say that uh, this site at, at, in the North Snowy, uh, in the uh, North uh, Snake Range, uh, was the subject of a Penrose conference in 1982 led by Jan Tullis, uh, where uh, there were, was a special um, Penrose session strictly on the formation of myelinites. And most of the work was done by the people that you see here um, at that conference. Uh, just quickly, uh, using modern uh, methods, we use electron backscattered uh, diffraction methods to determine crystallographic preferred orientation. And let me just quickly show, oh, let's not do that. Um, going from uh, west uh, to east, this pattern here, we see the cross uh, symmetric girdle indicates that this is dominantly a pure shear situation on the west and uh, the fabric gets more and more intense as we go to the east. We'll take a look at this in a little more detail. So going from the west, we see pure shear, but here where we see a single girdle that is uh, asymmetric, this indicates more of a simple shear uh, style of deformation. So again, as the intensity increases, the deformation style uh, increases as we go across the range. And so, in terms of history of geologic thinking, uh, one of my advisors on my graduate committee, P uh, Peter Misch, in the 1960s, first identified this regional décollement, and he thought it was part of the, the basement to the fold and thrust belt. We now know that that is not the case. Um, the recent model by uh, primary author Elizabeth Miller is this one down here where there's a significant amount of stretching along uh, the uh, detachment zone itself. Extension accommodated in the hanging wall by this series of um, normal faults. But there's a significant amount of stretching in the lower plate that we see here. And the stretching in the lower plate almost exactly balances the stretching in the upper plate. So there is not the need for a large amount of lateral displacement. And this is in counterpoint to uh, the work of uh, John Bartley and Brian Wernicke, um, who proposed this model over here. And they propose as much as 40 to 60 kilometers 
displacement of the hanging wall blocks. This has not been resolved. It's the great thing about science. We have these debates, and it keeps us uh, with something to do. Uh, so there's still more work to be done here. I will point out that uh, the area has been now mapped at a scale of 1 to 24,000 by co-author Jeff Lee. These maps are publicly available. And uh, the authors uh, invite you to come out and see this uh, for yourself. So thank you very much.